Hello and welcome to Mount Calvary's Daily Devotion for Tuesday, August 13th. My name is Trevor Hudlin. I'm the DCE intern here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. And we're so happy you've decided to join us for our daily devotion today. And this week we're focusing on talking about Judas, the disciple of Jesus. And we're going to talk about today uh, the betrayal. Well, I'll say part one. Betrayal part one today. And we learned yesterday that, G that Judas is not uh, the most noble person. He's a deceitful person. He's a liar. He tries to steal things. He's a thief. And today we're going to hear about uh, the first part of Judas betraying Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 14. Uh, we're going to read the, the two kind of sections here. Uh, the short one that's titled, uh, Judas to Betray Jesus, but we're also going to read the Passover because I think it's important to read them together and kind of see the whole story flow uh, one part to another. So we're going to start Matthew 26, starting at verse 14. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus directed him, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him, one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. So we get this first section, and we learned uh, in the previous reading that we had yesterday about the perfume that Judas would rather sell, and that sometimes he would lend himself to taking money out of the money bag, G that Judas was very uh, lustful for money. Judas loved money. He held money in such a high regard to even to the point that not only he was willing to steal it from his friends and his disciples, but he was willing to hand Jesus over to the authorities for money. That he was willing to betray his best friend, someone who had walked with him for years, for some money. And, and as we get through this first section, as the chief priests give him 30 pieces of silver, it says from there on, he looked, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. Now, what, is that, what does that mean? Well, you see, Judas wanted to get out of this situation alive. And he knew that if he were to betray Jesus in front of a big crowd of people, there could have been some Jesus followers around, and he could have been killed for his actions. So he wanted to wait for the right opportunity in a secluded place where he could betray Jesus and not many people would know that it was him. Which is why we don't see him do it here. And I think we also don't see him do it immediately because the Passover still has to take place. You see, Jesus' timeline is not finished yet. Jesus has multiple lessons he still has to teach the disciples. We talked about one uh, when we talked about James and John, where he has to teach them about praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and how important that is. We see one in the Passover where he washes the disciples' feet. We see the Lord's Supper that he will institute just moments after what we just read. So there's an opportunity. Judas is waiting on an opportunity, but you could also phrase it as Judas is waiting on God's timeline. He's waiting for the moment that God has picked out for this to happen. So we get to the Passover, and they're having they're eating this meal or whatnot, and Jesus, out of nowhere, just comes with the comment, Truly I say to you, one of you is going to betray me. 
Imagine what that would have felt like for the other 11 disciples in the room. Shocked. Looking around. Asking, is it going to be me? Am I going to betray you, Lord Jesus? Am I the one who's going to do you harm? And he responds to that, but then you hear Judas say, is it I, Rabbi? And Jesus says, you have said so. And I wonder, I, I can just imagine him saying this in a way where the other disciples don't hear it. And Judas is now known that Jesus knows he's going to betray him. And imagine the guilt and the shame that comes over Judas. And we're going to see this guilt and this shame that comes over Judas not stop today, but go into the next couple days of our daily devotions. But I like to focus on the joy of this. That even though J Jesus knew his time was coming, he knew his time was coming to an end. Jesus never stopped serving his disciples. Jesus never stopped loving his disciples and his people. Jesus could have easily dodged this. He knew who was going to betray him. He knew when he was going to betray him. He could have easily missed it, but he didn't. Because he remained faithful to you and to I. He remained faithful unto death on a cross because of his love for us. And tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, the second part of the betrayal where Jesus is actually arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'd invite you back tomorrow and let us pray to close our daily devotion. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day you've blessed each and every one of us with. Thank you so much for your Son, Jesus, Lord, who you sent into the world to die on the cross for all of us so that our sins can be washed away. We can be your forgiven children. And Lord, I pray that we would be re reminded of that this day and you would give us strength, comfort, and peace this Tuesday. Amen. I pray you have a phenomenal Tuesday, and I pray that I would see you again tomorrow for our daily devotion.